New England? MC Kool-Aid, are you in the house? Where's MC Kool-Aid? Well, MC Kool-Aid is here and Beck Phillips is with him. Beck was in the contest a couple of years ago and uh, as a result of that now has a charted album. Way to go, Beck Phillips. We also have in the house, I believe, from ESPN, Dan Patrick. Dan, are you here? All right. Dan Patrick in the house, thank you for coming. You, sir, are in for an amazing bout tonight. All right, referees, are we ready? We have the right time. Are we ready to rock and roll? All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're ready because this is going to be a beauty. Put your hands together and make some noise. It is time to roll. All right, just like the last time, before we bring the girls out, we're going to bring out the folks that keep them all in line. Here are your referees from Gotham Girls Roller Derby. It's Endless Justin. Texas Roller Girls are sending Johnny Roast Beef. From Gotham Girls, it's Hambone. Also, Gotham Girls, Pachinko. And Johnny Zebra. From the Connecticut Roller Girls, Major and Fraction. And the head rep from the Garden Girls Roller Derby, it is Sugar Daddy. All right, we are really ready to go. It is my special privilege tonight to introduce to you the announcer from the Gotham Girls to bring in their team, the one and only Corn Dog. Let's hear it for Corn Dog. Ladies and gentlemen, cats and kittens, it is my esteemed delight to present to you the Scrappers from the Apple, coming through from the burrows, the bombs, the beats, the mayhem and the pain, the beats from the east. Ladies and gentlemen, they have come a long, long ways to avenge a defeat last year at the ECE, and they are here now to entertain you, taking on the Gotham Girls from Austin, Texas, 
the league that started the flat track roller derby revolution, the Texas Roller Girls. I give you the Texas Roller Girls! She wears 1889, it is Mel Star! Number 40, Bloody Mary! Number 17, Bullet Tooth Tracy! Number 100, it is Cracker Jack! Number 76, it is Curvette! Two, two, two! Desi Creation! And number 15, it is Friction Vixen! She wears number 56. Please welcome Lucille Brawl! Number 19, Molotov Impale! And the 03, Olivia shooting the John. She wears the three times ten to the eight. It is Race Rocket. Number 18, please welcome Shank. Wearing number 53, Vicious Van Gogh. And number five, Kata Killzom. Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, put your hands together for the Texas Texacutioners. Oh yes they do. I saw that bout go down last year. It was a tough one. Hey, Reverend Almighty back, DNF standing alongside Moose, and we are ready, Moose. Uh, both teams are doing their cheers. They get on the track now. We're getting the full squad of executioners waiting on Gotham now. Bloody Thunders coming up on the line for the Gotham Girls against Bloody Mary for the Texacutioners. Can you feel the impact? The building is already getting ready to shake. And our first jam is off. A fast pack as we go into turn three now, turn four. Both jammers neck and neck. Bonnie Thunders working the front of that back and she just leaving him a stack. Bonnie Thunders muscled her way through the front of that back. Leave the legal, both hands down by her side, just let her torso do the talking right there, both. And Bloody Mayor and Mary still held up in the pack and still have not made her initial pass yet. Come on, look at it here, who's in the pack now? Bonnie Thunders right back in the back, passing that Bloody Mary easily. It is the one thing I love about this internet is we can just say it as we see it because they can't hear us. And Bloody Thunder, man, right through the grand slam action. This is the way Gotham wanted to start it, and this is exactly what Texas didn't want to see. Yeah, grand slam, the first jam. You can't get better than that. You know, it's not too difficult to do when your body thunders, but you wouldn't think that it was going to start right out with this kind of play early on against a team as highly ranked as Texas. Bloody Mary, Bloody makes Mary it. being called for cutting the track. It'll be a power jam for Gotham. Finally makes it through the back and then called on cutting. And unfortunately, you know, not a great move on, on her part. Bonnie Thunders now calls the jam knowing that they get to come up unopposed. And you got Susie Hot Rod coming up for Gotham now, gonna skate unopposed. Ten points on the board for Gotham. 
Susie Hot Rod, definitely one of the who's who of roller derby. Some people just live as legends beyond their team. You just hear their name, you don't even know who they skate for. You just constantly hear their name. Susie Hot Rod is one of those names, but let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, she skates for Gotham, and you're gonna about to see why. And the pack is off into turn three now. And here comes Susie Hot Rod into turn four. It hits the pack, gets stopped up, and she is not finding a hole. Now she does find a hole, going into turn one, now turn two. Frisch and Vixen doing a great job of trying to hold her back. But unfortunately, goes down hard and ends up in the back of the back of herself. And Susie Hot Rod is definitely facing a tough front pack right now. Still a power jam for Gotham here. Still in the sit bin. Bullet Texas. 2 Tracy doing a great job at holding Susie Hotrod back there. Knocked her out of bounds a few times. You all know you got to come back up, back in behind that player that knocks you out so you don't cut the track. Both of these teams have that defensive play down very, very well. Bloody Mary back on the track now for the Texecutioners. Into the pack, making her initial pass. And boy, she just threw that pass pack very fast. Out, you know, he's half a track ahead now. Suzy Hot Rod getting taken down in turn one. Suzy Hot Rod in the back of the pack now getting laps. Once again by Bloody Mary coming out, not the lead jammer, but definitely going to be scoring the points here. She came out of there as fast like she stole something, Moose. And Bloody Mary scoring a grand slam for Texecutioners. Five points on the board for the execution there. That's the way to go from the bottom of the mountain to the top of the mountain real quick from inside the box to a five point grand slam. And Coach Kool-Aid Jones giving her the uh, the go ahead to keep on skating. And roll it out, roll it out. A lot of heavy hitting in there. I'll tell you, I'm impressed with Victor Vixen. She is just pushing her body around in there. We're not pushing enough to stop Bloody Mary on that jam. And we're getting an official scoring update here. I think Bloody Mary got in for a, a few more points there. And yes, she did. Oh my goodness, look at that scoreboard. Oh! 10 to nine, that's a one point game. And that's what we want. What we want to see, what the world wants to see. You know, both of these teams have been involved in blowouts all year long. This is just an incredible derby here. Bonnie Thunders back up on the line for Gotham against Lucille Brawl for the Texecutioners. Back into turn three, now turn four. Lucille Brawl finds a hole into the straightaway, now turn one. Lucille Brawl is through. She's got the lead champ, but she's gotten held back up in the pack again. This D Cubs doing exactly what she does. Got in front of her and slowed her right back down. I gotta tell you, the physicality already that we have seen has surpassed the entire last bout. Bonnie Thunder, the jammer in the lead, but not lead jammer. We'll see if we still ball call out the jam before they get to the pack again. We definitely have a road race going on, and you gotta wonder what Jim Kool-Aid Jones has told them to do in these parts. And yeah, she called off the jam. Did she do it a little bit late? You know, you gotta wait till that fourth whistle before the jam is over. I think by waiting that extra few seconds, the Texas just put, I'm sorry, the Gotham just got another point on the board. Uh, maybe, maybe not. We haven't got a scoring update yet. And don't think it's still 10 to nine, looks like. With just over 24 minutes left in the first half. Olivia Shooting John coming up on the line for the Texecutioners. Susie Hot Rod out there doing what she does for Gotham so well. Beautiful hit by Rice Rocket on Susie Hot Rod. Back in the back stretch now coming into turn three. Neither Susie Hot Rod nor Olivia Shooting John have made their initial pass yet. Rice Rocket getting called out to the box. An illegal hit definitely took her from the side. Little elbow action to the front of the pectoral muscle. We're on our third lap of this jam, and neither jammer has established the lead jam yet, or, or even made their initial pass. You know, lately they've been talking about how slow roller derby has gotten. I don't know if this team's heard about it, because they are skating at full speed right now. And 
Olivia's shooting job gets through and lead jammer for the Texas Houstoners. Susie Hot Rod still behind the girl friction vixen that is definitely the defensive monster for the Texas Houstoners right, right now. She has just become a wall to reckon with. Susie Hot Rod still held up in the pack on her initial pass. Let me shoot Don into turn two now, into the pack. Frisch and Vixen definitely getting called out. Hit Susie Hot Rod with a little back block right there and off to the penalty box she goes. Susie Hot Rod making her initial pass through the pack now, but here comes Olivia, Olivia shoot Don, gets through. And scores four points for the Texas Cusiners, bringing the score to 13 to 10 in favor of the Texas Cusiners with 22-28 left for the first half. What an incredible, incredible first eight minutes we're getting here tonight. Aaron, neither team is going to hold anything back. Bloody Mary back up onto the line for the Texecutioners. Barbara Ambush coming up for the first time tonight for the Gotham Roller Girls. Score correction, 13 and 10. Uh, did I say 14 or 13? Uh, oh, I think you said 13. I said 13. Uh, Moose is smarter than a fifth grader, so here we go. Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary coming off, and we got Barbara Ambush out there for Gotham. I've never seen Barbara Ambush uh, jam before, so this will be very interesting. She's on the inside, Bloody Mary's on the outside, gets knocked out of bounds. Hard hit on there by the Corvette, just banged her into the wall. Neither jammer has established their initial pass yet. Both of these packs are hitting hard right now. Very difficult. And that and is the Roosel Brawl whip. Bloody Mary gets a big, big whip and is now lead jammer. Barbara Ambush is quick on her tail. It's a race to the finish line. The finish line is who scores first in that pack. Bloody Mary into the straightaway now. And she calls off the jam though. I don't know if she got past the shoulder of that last blocker. I'm not sure if she did or not. Maybe she was preserving. Yeah, she got one point there. So 14 to 10 in favor of the executioners. She did get the one point. A very smart move. Like we said, it takes four whistles. A lot can happen in four whistles. She called it off, got the one point, and said, I'm going home with this one. Yeah, as we got Rice Rocket now coming up onto the line for the executioners against Bonnie Thunders. Bonnie Thunders and Rice Rocket both off the line and once again this pack is skating fast tonight. And Bonnie Thunders and Turris lead jammer for the Gotham Rollers. That's the creation let her pass right by her. I don't know what happened there. Looked like she pulled a one-two switch like the KO punch of Muhammad Ali. Went to the outside, came to the inside, got right through. Rice Rocket finding herself in a very not familiar spot as she's way behind. Bonnie Thunders takes the fall, calls the jam from the back. Bull Tooth Tracy taking down Bonnie Thunders there, and Bonnie Thunders calling out the jam in turn three. That is the awareness of Bonnie Thunders. She's in the air, landing, about to land on her backside, and she calls the jam off. Two points scored for the Gotham girls there. Another 20 minutes, 19.30 left to be exact. 14 to 12 in favor of the executioners. Susie Hot Rod up on the jam line. Going up against Olivia Shooting John, who had an incredible jam earlier. Shooting John going down the back stretch. Fiskikoff's got a good hit on her on the inside. Put her down, slowed her up, but she's right back up to the front of that pack again, Moose. And Bonnie, Th Bonnie Thunders held up the track, but Olivia Shooting John looking for a line. Gets through on the inside. She's lead jammer for the executioner. Candy Cakes was doing what she could to hold her back with that booty bringing it side to side. But I'm telling you, Olivia Shooting John, she's got moves like Sugar Ray Leonard back, right, inside, outside, the passed her on the inside. A fast, fast pack. Look at this pack. I mean, those jammers are having a tough time catching up. Olivia Shooting John looks like she is skating an endurance race right now just to get back to the pack. Candy Cakes is in there. Hard hits. Almost took Corvette off her feet with that last hit. 
But these are all legal hits, as you can see. Everything is going nice because the penalty box is cleared out. Robert Ambush coming up onto the line for Gotham. We got Lucille Brawl up there for the Texas Kusher. With just 18 minutes left in the first half, 16-12 in favor of the Texas Kusher's. This is still very much anybody's bout. Four points is nothing. Well, if we go by what we're looking at so far, people were questioning who Texas was this year. They're not going to have to question anymore. This team is legit and ready to go. Lucille Brawl in the pack into turn two. Hard hitting action right now. Jim, Jim just snap up front. Holding down that line against Lucille. And a 20 foot call made, and Lucille Brawl is through his lead jammer for the Texas Fusioners. Donna Matrix had to let her go. Lucille Brawl, lead jammer. Now she's going to see if she can catch up to this fast, fast pack. She's going to have a little bit of trouble here as we have two executioners in the penalty box. They call that a power jam. A power jam, that's right. And when you got a front line up there like Ginger Snout and John Matrix. That is a hard one to get through, but she calls off that jam. Bonnie Thunders now coming up to the line for Gotham against Bloody Mary. Scoring two in that last jam, bringing the score to 18 to 12. A very, very defensive bout here. I get a look at the, the quadricep hamstring development right now from the side view of Bloody Mary. And I'll tell you, I would never, ever leg wrestle that woman. Neither would I. She is built like a triathlete, and she's skating about twice as fast as every other girl out there tonight. Bonnie Great. Thunders on the outside, Bloody Mary to the inside, and back into turn one now. Takes now a, turn two. Takes a skirt whip, but we got Bonnie Thunders pulls through his lead jammer. As this is Van Gogo goes down, taking half the backpack with her. Several players going to the sin bin now as Bonnie Thunder is into what's left of the pack and stays through very easily. Falls off the jam, four and out. We were just talking about how clean this game was and all of a sudden everybody's in the penalty box. You know, everything changes moment to moment in Roller Derby. Especially when a bout gets this close, so early in the bout, you're going point for point. These girls really start to get frustrated with each other. A lot happens inside that pack that you don't see. Olivia Sh shooting John back up there once again for the Tech Executioners. A two-point bout with 15 minutes left in the first half. Susie Rockwan out there for Gotham. Two points and these two jammers hit the back of that pack hard. And it looks like Olivia shooting John call for cutting the track and will be going to the penalty box. This will be a power jam for Gotham. Exactly what Gotham is looking to do. They gotta open this up. Down by two points. Power jam is exactly what they want with Susie Hot Run out there. But that front line of the Texecutioners is not gonna let her through easy as Rice Rocket. Beautiful back move by Susie Hot Run, but Rice Rocket still continuing that speed, holding her back. Susie Hot Rod realizing she wasn't going anywhere fast, decides to call off that jam. Yeah, preserve the power jam for the next jam. You very rarely see such a defensive uh, team skating so fast at the same time. They are leaving no room for anything accidental to happen out there. Speed and defense together. That's why we're looking at two of the best teams in the country. Speaking of best team, Bonnie Thunder stepping up for Gotham. No score change, 14 minutes, under 14 minutes left in the first half, 18-16 in favor of the Texas Kishners. We are off once again, Bonnie Thunders going to hit into the line. Vicious Van Gogo holding back that line as that skirt flies high. Yeah. 
Chasing her down like a dog catcher, chasing a rabbit pit bull through a good neighborhood. They are not letting the jammer Bonnie Thunders through. And oh, back hit right there. That is a back hit. I know Cracker Jack didn't want to hear it, but that definitely was an illegal hit. Bonnie Thunders then had to get past her, and Cracker Jack's heading off to the penalty box. Bonnie Thunders with an established jam called the jam out right away though as Livingston John came back on the track after that penalty. Smart moves started out fresh. They got some of their, uh, we got uh, Cracker Jack still in the box. We got one player from Gotham about to come out. We got Lucille Brawl out there for the Texecutioners going up against Barbara Ambush. Oh, here's something a little different. The pack starts out very slow on this jam. Lucille Brawl goes down quickly, but right back up. Barbara Ambush still at the back of the pack. Can't break her own line, let alone the executioner's line. And Lucille Brawl gets lead jammer status. Amazing action going on in that pack as Rice Rocket is going toe to toe right now for with Donna Matrix. She packs a big punch as Lucio Brawl goes back in the pack into the stretch. Now she goes down at turn one though as she's on a scoring pass for the Texecutioners. Somebody borrow her a Weeble because she wobbles but she doesn't go down. She comes right back up again. And she almost had a grand slam on Barbara Ambush there but Ambush has made it through the pack on her initial pass finally. Ambush definitely made it through the back, and now she is skating fast. I don't think that we will see Bloody Mary. Oh, beautiful hit right there. An amazing hit as Lucille Brawl gets thrown to the floor. Bonnie Thunder's coming back up onto the line for Gotham against Bloody Mary for the Texecutioners. We have a six point bout in favor of the Texecutioners right now. And I know a lot of people are shocked right now, Moose, that the Texecutioners are leading the fight tonight. They're, they're doing a very, very defensive bout tonight. Very, very physical. Both skaters off the line, a little jump by Bloody Mary, but she held back. Allowing Bonnie Thunders to get ahead as Bloody Mary takes the inside line. Great, great hit. Happening there by Polly Gunn. Bloody Mary looking for a line. Bloody Mary is through. And, but no, she's not. She's got a penalty. This is a power jam for Gotham. Power jam for Gotham as Body Thunders takes over as your lead jammer. Sweet Sherry Pie heading off to the penalty box. Gotham is looking to pull something out of the belt early on to try to reestablish their dominance here as Texecutioners speed up that pack. And let me say something, the blockers here tonight look like they're skating as fast as any jammers I've seen skate in a while. Very, very fast pack tonight, Al. We got Polly gone in there, allowing the whip by Bonnie Thunders and then goes down. Lucille Brawl takes a skate to the face. I'm sorry, that Vicious Van Gogo a skate to the face, but right back up, both her and Polly gone, hard hitting inside that pack. The 20 foot rule, Bonnie Thunders makes the pass. And ladies and gentlemen, we're back to a one point game at this point. You know, a lot of this game is about momentum, and you get that one or two jams that put it back in your favor, and it all goes your way. And Bloody Mary back on the track for the Texecutioners now as the jam clock winds down. She's in the track, and she's skating once again like she stole something. As she was about to pass Bonnie Thunders, Bonnie Thunders Oak called out the jam, and Bloody Mary comes up with a big zero. And These girls are working tonight. We started out that last jam four points down, now they're four points up. 
slow pack off the line. Very slow pack, but that's how they started the last jam, and then they ended up in a full sprint by the end. Pissy Cuss on the outside, shooting John to the inside. Both jammers neck and neck through turn two now. It's like a figure eight race. They're going to see who meets in the middle, but oh, so that was Olivia shooting John. Took a great fall to the back, but right back up again. Didn't lose one step to Fisty Cuffs, but Fisty Cuffs gets through the pack. She's through, but she's not lead jammer. She had a minor uh, track cut there, so she will not get lead jam status. And you just got to wonder at this point, where, oh, where is Olivia shooting John? Going to pull up the energy to get through this pack. Oh, it's Hyperlinks just knocks her to the floor. Beautiful, solid hit by Hyperlinks. She's going to have a little more trouble going in the pack as there are two Texas accusers in the penalty box. And she's up against a wall of Gotham girls as Fifty Cuss comes back into the pack again for a scoring pass. Hyperlinks once again with a great hit. Donna Matrix, a great hit. Both coming around, turn two. And we got a few, we got Donna Matrix heading off to the penalty box. I hit past the 20 point rule. Olivia shooting John called off that champ. And with 640 left in the first half, Gotham Girls All-Star 28, the Texas Kushners 22. Lucille Brawl coming up onto the line against Susie Hot Rod. Gotham Girls All-Stars are up by six in what has been a very, very fast first half. Very fast, very physical as well. Only six minutes left on the clock. Back in the turn four, Susie Hot Ride right even with Lucille Brawl as they go in the turn one, now turn two. Lucy Brawl, Lucille Brawl on the inside. Susie Hot Ride right behind her. And Lucille Brawl is through. And Lucille Brawl is lead terror for the executioners. But she is fouled in a race by Susie Hotrod. You know, you get lead jammer status, the last thing you need is Susie Hotrod breathing down your neck. And she's doing that right now as they're coming around the track through turn one and turn two now. It is very important as to when she calls this jam. Because as you, yeah, it's a zero, zero. Okay, neither one scored. When you get that close to the back and you call that jam just a moment too late, that other jammer can still score points. It takes four whistles to end that jam. And Lucille Brawl wisely calls off the jam uh, to stop the bloodletting, if you want to call it that. This is still a six-point bout. Anybody's bout at this point. It's the Battle of the 40s. Bonnie Thunder 340 going up against Bloody Mary 40. These two girls are getting to know each other very well tonight. I'm sure they're not Facebook friends, but they may be when it's all over. It's kind of like war buddies trading stories 30 years later in some VA hospital. Back into turn four, now the straightaway. Bonnie Thunder held up in traffic, and Bloody Mary is through and is lead jammer for the executioners. That is probably the easiest pass I've seen tonight as Bloody Mary just was able to find a hole and skate right through it. Bonnie Thunder is still deep with inside that pack, giving Bloody Mary a chance to lap up, and here she comes as she's coming around turn four. She's behind Bollocks, and she's going into the pack. Bonnie Thunder is still trying to make her initial pass, as Bloody Mary is now in the pack for a scoring pass for the Texacutioners. Bloody Mary gets by Anna Bollocks. Not an easy thing to do, as Sweet Sherry Pie was also hitting on her. And Bloody Mary looking for a 20 foot call, gets it, and makes it through. And four points up on the board. Is that four or three? I well, can't three tell. points up Looks on the like board. Got three points. I think she might have. Spinning his hand around so everybody can see, but the guy who needs it. They're in the lead now, 28 to 25 is in favor of Gotham. It's going to be a seesaw battle back and forth. And Bonnie Thunders has finally made her initial pass, getting out of the pack. Bloody Mary, though, back in the pack, hard and heavy. Beautiful hit out there. Catch the name and number on that one. Bloody Mary finally calling off that jam as she sees Bonnie Thunders 
about to enter the back of that pack. And we are back to a one point game. Moose said he wasn't gonna duck with that. Moose has a ducking problem where he ducks his head down every time he looks into the microphone. Yeah, don't, don't hit up the Moose for uh, uh, style points right now while we're trying to produce a bat. Because, ladies and gentlemen, it is three minutes left, 3.05 left in the first half, 28-27 in favor of Gotham. It is a one-point game. Everybody here is getting what they paid for. Not only did they get a great first bout tonight, but this right here is worth the price of admission. You're watching two of the best teams in the Rowan Derby world, and there's a one-point de difference with three minutes left in the first period. And we have nobody in the sim bin, so there's will be full two squads on the track now as Olivia Shooting John comes up against Barbara Ambush, is that? Barbara Ambush. Yes. Barbara Ambush plays a very, very physical jammer line. She plays the jammer line like a pivot. As you see her go into that back, she goes in shoulder first. Referee's calling for the pack. They're saying they're splitting it up. Bring it together, girls. And they are doing it. Barbara Ambush and Olivia Shooting John both deep inside that back. Olivia Shooting John trying to get a whip right now off of Fishers Van Gogo. But everything got broken up. And through the other side, we got it as Barbara Ambush, lead jammer status. And once again, we got another jammer race. And jammer on jammer action now as, as Olivia Shooting John bumps Barbara Ambush out of the way. Barbara Ambush calls off the jam though. You think she's bumping her on the side going, you better call this off, you better call this off. It's like, you want to be wise here, call this jam off. We got two minutes and counting. We're bound probably what could be the last jam of the first half, and we're ending it out the way we started with Bloody Mary up on the line for the Texecutioners against Susie Hot Rod. For Gotham, we're still at a one-point game. Oh, my God. Zena Paradox, one-point game, what do you think? That's Zena Paradox, folks. If you want to talk to Zena Paradox live, log into the blog. And the jammers are off and into the pack now, into turn three. Susie Hodder on the inside. Bloody Mary hanging back a bit. She's up against Anna Bullock and doesn't get by them. Anna Bullock's definitely not something you easily get by. Oh, we got another player going off. Susie Hot Rod is through, but she does not get Lee Jam established, though. No, she had an illegal hit against Mrs. Van Gogo, but then Mrs. Van Gogo black blocked her and then ended up in the penalty box herself. Bloody Mary skating slow, trying to get back in without getting the cutting of the track penalty. Finally in with 52 seconds left. We got a five-point grand slam, putting the Gotham girls into a nice six-point lead. And she's going to try to extend that lead now. She goes into the pack now, coming into turn four. Yeah, we did start this out with less than two minutes, so it's going to go to natural progression. Nice hit by Rice Rocket as we see somebody's tape fly off and into the box. Rice Rocket, everybody thinks of her as an offensive player, but what a defensive line she's been holding tonight. Yeah, she's been, been doing a great job there. Bloody Mary still held up on her initial pass. And Susie Hot Rod now is making a second scoring pass for, the, for Gotham. And, and she got it. Another grand slam. Wide to the sky right there, extending the lead 38 to 27 in favor of Gotham. Gotham, this is exactly how they wanted to go back in to the locker room for halftime. We're, we're in our last jam. We're just waiting for him to call it. And one more time. Another grand slam, 15 points in this jam. That is a way to bring it alive. Folks, I don't even know if you can hear me. The house is going crazy right now. Going crazy, that last jam there. 
as we come to halftime. Our score, 43 to 27 in favor of the Gotham girls. But this is definitely not the bout moose that we thought we were gonna see. Some people were talking about the Centennial Point being hit before the first half. That's not gonna happen. People were talking about how many points. That's not happening. This is a defensive game. And we didn't see a, a really a big offense until that final jam of the first half when Susie Hotrod scored a 15 point. Yeah, that last that last jam by Susie Hotrod really extended the lead for the Gotham girls. It's gonna be an interesting second half. We'll see if, if, if Texas actually has enough gas for the second half. Jim Kool-Aid Jones, you know he's taking those girls. They're going into the locker room and they're gonna regroup. I don't really think they're gonna change their game plan all that much though, because what they've been doing has been working and they're only down by 15 points against the number one ranked team in the country. And let me tell you, 15 points as we just saw. It can be done in one, one jam. jam. It can be done in one jam. If, if Texas gets a power jam or if they just get you know get the right holes in the pack, they can bring it back and be a, uh, anybody's match once again. Exactly, 15 points when you're looking at the two best teams in the country can happen to anybody. Is the Reverend Almighty seeing a beer? I, I think he's seen a beer. It's good. Yeah, I, I, yeah. The Moose would like a beer too. Uh, yes, we would love beer. One, she's holding one she's beer, gonna, we'll and to, she's looking. Right, now let me see what happens. Wait a minute. I sleep with this girl, so let's see who she hands it to. Yeah, yeah. Give it to me. What <laughs> a prediction. Game. All right. I guess. I guess. All right, ladies and gentlemen. The Reverend Almighty's girlfriend did not bring him a beer. Brought it to Moose. That is how much of a sex symbol and a star this man is in the roller derby community. Well, cheers to the roller derby community out there, everybody. Raise your glasses in merriment for the world-class derby you're seeing here tonight, courtesy of Derby News Network. And we got to thank our sponsors, Roller Warriors DVD. Go to rollerwarriors.tv and get your season full of DVD at rollerwarriors.tv. Roller Warriors, that is a, such a great documentary. I've seen a lot of them. We've even had one done on us. I think just about every league has. What are the chances of getting a documentary on the same year that you blow out the world with a Cinderella story? And like I said, if you're if you're not even a huge huge fan of roller derby, and you watch that documentary, you're gonna be. Oh, it's a great, 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 great story to to, to be on video. And from all I have not seen the video yet, but from all accounts, it is a great derby video to watch. So. I am hearing right now, Zena Paradox is telling us right now that people from bars are blogging. In Texas, they are having bar parties right now. And look who's here, it's Lucille Brawl from the Texas Futures. That's right, I want to give a shout out to the Schultz Garden uh, viewing party that's going on. If they're, they're probably all at the bar right now getting beer. They're Speaking of bar right getting now. beer, <laughs> Reverend Alex thank you very much so, for the prediction. Any strategy for the second half, that, that last jam kind of blew you out a little bit. but and That's part of the strategy. Right there, we were trying to make them feel confident, don't tell them, just so that now they're, they're probably drinking. And uh, we're just going to come back strong in the second half. Well, we're looking forward to it. It's been a great, great, great bout. Jam for them is an easy one jam for us. We're just going to trade it back and forth with them till the end when we take it home. That's all it takes is one jam. That's the last jam that counts. Well, Lucille Brawl, good luck in the second half. Bye, Texas! Wow. Oh, wait a minute. I think I can hear the rumble now coming across the country. Texas, Texas, kill, kill, kill. I think I'm hearing that. I think I hear it right now. Is Somewhere right now there's a mechanical bull getting his ass kicked. <laughs> Ozzy Zion is probably revving up the chainsaw right now. Exactly. Ozzy, this one's for you and everybody down below the Mason-Dixon line. Yes. Cheers. We also want to mention our other sponsor tonight. Black Eyed Susan Skate Shop. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I don't like talking about myself in the third person. But I guess got to say the Reverend Almighty lives in his few T-shirts. I don't wear a lot of T-shirts. I get t-shirts given to me all the time. Derby leagues give me t-shirts. I'm not comfortable in t-shirts. But Black Eyed Susan gave me a t-shirt last year at ECDX. And that thing is so worn. I love that thing, but it still has a worn out, man. It gets through the wash every time. They are a Derby owned, Derby run team. They sponsor Derby News Network. And if you like what you're seeing here tonight, it can't happen if our sponsors. Look, Texas, Texas. Kill. Kill. They're a violent, violent community down south. And, and Curvette ch chiming in there for the Texecutioners. 
We need to get a Gotham uh, girl over here so that we can get a little bit of uh, equal opportunity time. Looks like they're over there strategizing, doing some strategery over there at the bench. Little As we have about five minutes left in the first half. If you've got to go, go now. Get those cocktails refreshes, refreshed. Get the new beers. Get ready for this awesome second half. Get yourself a beer. Hit the head. Go outside for a safety meeting. Do whatever you got to do because it... Less than five minutes, we are back to what I've I've announced about 40 bouts since January 1st, and this is definitely taking the cake so far. You got the moose beat. I've been to a few. I've been all over the, the country this year, but the, you've got me you got me beat bout wise. So, but yeah, like we said earlier, if you want to see more flat track derby on the internet, by all means, go sponsor our go go support our sponsors. Or if you want to donate directly to DirtyNewsNetwork.com, go out on our website and find our donate link. I think Gnosis will have it out there somewhere, or Hurt will get it up there pretty dang quick. Otherwise, donate directly to Derby News. We'll be more than happy to come in and produce your bow. And don't forget about tomorrow, we're going to have the live blog. Um, we don't think we'll have video air, but do log on because you never know. We're going to see if we can make it happen. But we're at least going to have the live blog. Charm City, when Texas, we're, we haven't even talked about this. Yeah. Whatever happens within the next 30 minutes, Texas has to leave here, get in their cars. They're going for a ride about halfway tonight, I hear. Right. Crashing in a hotel, getting up, driving another halfway, playing Charm City. If you're in the roller derby world, you know who Charm City is. Right. At 10 o'clock tomorrow morning in Wilmington, Mass. And, and then they turn around, they take a rest in the afternoon, and then they play Boston. So... Big challenge this weekend. You know, Derby Leagues go all over the country to play in what we call tournaments. And they'll play three bouts in a weekend, but they don't have to drive three hours between bouts. It's rink one and rink two, or they get to sit down and rest for the next 12 hours. They are playing three bouts in 24 hours, and I wish them luck. And also going on this weekend, down in Austin, go to derbynewsnetwork.com, look for the link. The Battle of the Bank down in Austin going on this weekend down there. And, of course, next weekend, next weekend, the big one in Philadelphia, the East Coast Extravaganza. Really amazing live coverage there by Derby News Network as well. Join us here from Gotham, Corndog. Wow, wow. This is a great, great, amazing turnaround. Texas looking phenomenal this year. I cannot wait to see Nationals because I, you can hear it here first. I'll be willing to bet dollars to donuts the executioners are going to be at nationals. Dollars to donuts and donuts are very, very important to Corn Dog. So that's a big bet he's giving right now, folks. I'll be back to, I'll be back to talk to you guys after. All right. He'll All right. be back after Fair the enough. bout is so well. We're going to try to get some MVP interviews for you later. Um, some post bout. Stick around for the post bout. We'll have a plenty of post bout for you as well. Best time to drink. Hitman Hank, come on over here for a minute. Hitman Hank. Hitman Hank, the announcer for Connecticut, but tonight he's filling in as a Texas announcer. Hitman Hank, what do you think so far of this boat? So far, this is amazing. This is what you come to roller derby for. You know, the blowouts are cool if you're on the winning side, but God, you gotta love them when they're tight. Exactly, you gotta uh, love them when, yeah, love them when they're tight. I'm not touching that one. tight, too. But, you know, we've seen this year, everybody that Gotham has played, everybody that Texas has played, You've seen these huge blowouts. Now we got both these teams knocking heads, locking horns, playing king of the mountain right now. And there's not a big spread to be had. No, no, this is going to be close, I think, for the rest of the night. Texas is taking this really, really seriously. Their loss last year at the ECE, I think it's, it's really gotten to them, and they're just doing everything. They're trying new strategies, everything they can think of to try to beat this Gotham team. And have you ever seen a team in this new era of 4.0 where the game's supposed to be so slow they're out there skating at full speed i'm watching jammers that can't catch up to the back because the pack is skating full boat that is so true everybody is moving out there and even on this sport court type of track which tends to be a little bit slow those ladies are moving out there not taking it easy at all they're going to be surprising to see who's gassed at the end of the night too that could make a big difference in the way this bout goes Exactly. Endurance means everything. I didn't even think about the sport cord floor because, you know, the Reverend Almighty just walks around with his Ed Hardy shoes on. I'm not skating, so it's about the same step for me every time. But this floor is a very slow floor. And again, they look like they're skating on polished wood. 
Exactly right. But we have found that a lot of the teams, when they get to the end of the second half here, they will start to gas. So conditioning is going to mean everything, really. Well, Hitman, good luck in the second half. you got about 20 seconds to get back over there in the announcer's table. So good luck, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we're getting ready for the second half here of an incredible bout here in Connecticut. I apologize that you've had to look at our two ugly faces for the past 15 minutes, but now you get to watch the girls again. Let's get the cameraman to swing it back out, and let's see what's going on the track. I guess the hitman Hank doesn't want to talk about Zena Paradox live and in living color. Or Slack Harawak. Slack Harawak, Zena Paradox sitting right here next to me. I know they're here, but maybe he doesn't. But we all know the hitman Hank drinks a lot, so what are we going to do? I'm telling you what we're going to do. We got 43 to 27 in favor of the Gotham girls, and we are about to start out the second period. Three forty. We got Bonnie Thunders stepping up onto the line against Olivia shooting John. We got eleven hundred people logged on. I'm just hearing, and you know that there's nobody watching this alone. So we are looking at thousands and thousands of viewers around the world right now. We are setting records everywhere. We got record blogs. This is Betty Mercury, uh, ladies and gentlemen, from Connecticut Roll Girls. We've had the fire marshal here twice already. At least twice. At least twice, checking it out. There's a full house here. This is really incredible. And we're getting back to the action now as Bonnie Thunder is coming up against Olivia shooting John at the jam line. The only fire I see is coming off that jammer line tonight. So tell the fire marshal, sit back, relax, and enjoy some derby. And we go off hard and heavy as Candy Cake and Rice Rocket controlling the front of that pack. Bonnie Thunders and Olivia shooting John. Olivia shooting John being held back and hard hit right now. Bonnie Thunders through the back. She is Lee Jammer. And if she comes in to turn number four, she's gonna be hitting that pack hard. Excuse me, turn number two now. Like I said, that pack is skating. So fast. Surly Temple. Surly Temple definitely not on the good ship lollipop as she knocked Olivia Shooting John for a loop right there. And Olivia Shooting John has made her initial pass now finally as Bonnie Thunder is back into the pack now on a scoring pass for Gotham. On the scoring pass, but she is definitely not going to get an easy pass as she's getting hit by both Rice Rockets and Donna Matrix beating her down. We got Lucille Brawl coming back over. That girl never sat down there in the halftime, came over to talk to us, and then right back out there against Susie Hot Rod. Both girls off the line, about to make their initial step into the back. It's all Texas in the back, got them in the front. We'll see how that lineup happens. Lucille Brawl is through and is, Lee, is yes, Lee Chammer for the Texecutioners. A little delayed action on the hill there from the camera. It was like going through an inside gate. She came out to the outside, slid through the inside by a four pass. Susie Hot Rod has made her initial pass. Let's see right now 
if Lucille Brawl can get back into the back and score some points and if she's aware of Susie Hot Rod's place. And I believe she is. She calls a jam off as Susie Hot Rod got to the back of the pack. I think she called it off in time. She did as Roast Beef holds up the big zero point. Scored for Gotham at that point. Didn't catch the points on the executioners right there. Waiting for that to pop up, Moses. Yeah, I don't know. And I thought she had a scoring pass there, but we're not seeing any points on the board yet. Yeah, I definitely see that the uh, that the people controlling the scoreboard are looking for clarification from the referees. How many points were scored? I believe it was three. We're going to see. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah was there, three it, points. it was three points. Bringing the score now to 40, 47 to 30. In favor of Gotham. Bonnie Thunder's coming back out onto the jam line against Rice Rocket. Rice Rocket, she has that low, low, low center of gravity when she comes off that jam line. But Bonnie Thunders gives her a little bump. Rice Rocket just completely takes the shot from Sweet Sherry Pie and goes through it like it's nothing and becomes your lead jammer. And Bonnie Thunder still hung up in the pack here. And going through turn one. Vincent Van Gogh. Folks out there that are having the live feed troubles, we're working on it right now. We hope that you still have audio. We hope that you're hearing it if you're not seeing it. Quick pass, we have a three points there scored for the Tech Executioners. Sorry about the mix-up, folks. We're going in and out just a little bit here. Lucille Brawl going back up onto the line for the Tech Executioners. Up against the one and only Susie Hot Rod for the Gotham Girls. We are looking at a 14-point lead by the Gotham Girls. It's both skaters enter in the pack. Olivia Shoot John being held back. What a incredible move right now. Oh, beautiful hit. Lucille Brawl takes a solid shot. We do have a lead jammer. It is Susie, Susie Hot Rod, lead jammer. Talk about a race of jammers right now. Yeah, right on each other. Olivia shooting John, breathing down the neck of Susie Hot Rod. Right behind her, coming into the straightaway now. Packs in turn two, a fast pack as the jammers are having trouble catching up to the pack. As we go into turn four, now jammers into the pack, and Susie Hot Rod calls it off. That was just too close for comfort for anybody. I see one one proper finger from each jam ref there. Looks like they both scored one point there. Let's just double check it. 35 to 48, so we do have more. We had a two points. Two points for Tech Executioners, one point for the Gotham Girls. Looks like we have a timeout for the officials, and a timeout means a time to talk about our sponsors out there with Black Eyed Susan Skate Shop and Skate Gear. Remember, folks, please support those that support Roller Derby. And what a packed house tonight, Moose. Fire Marshal's in the building telling us we gotta clear people out. Then he looked and saw it was Roller Derby, sat down, got himself a big hot dog, and he's having the time of his life. And we got well over 900 online. We have a problem with the actual justin.tv page. Not sure what's going on with it. It was looking fine earlier, now it's jacked up for some reason. We don't know what's going on with it, but if you're watching the embed on Derby News Network, it looks just fine to the Moose. I mean, we're looking at it, it's beautiful. If you're listening to our audio, and you've gone in through the other way, log out, go on to Derby News Network and catch a live feed through that. Once again, Roll of Warriors, the DVD of DVDs to see the story of Kansas City's Cinderella story here. Now coming back up onto the line, we still got a little talk going on there. We got Bloody Mary who's just been doing it all night. 
going up against Barbara Ambush that's also had a couple really good jams. We got a 13-point game. I went to public school, so you might want to check the math on that yourself. You might be smarter than a fifth grader if you can calculate 48 minus 35. And the song that we're hearing in the background says it all. Oh, yeah. I don't think there's a person in this place that is not just off the hook about what we're seeing. I'm looking at smiles across the entire crowd. This is like Derby Utopia. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Waiting for the start whistle here. We're about to start now once again. We got Barbara Ambush up on the line against Bloody Mary for the execution. Finally at turn two, Fisticuffs. Nice hit on Rice Rocket there, sending her out of bounds. Bloody Mary looking for a line now, trying to get through on the straightaway into turn one now. Back into turn two as Barbara Ambush loses the handle, as does Bloody Mary. It's knocked out of bounds, but she gets to get back in bounds. Bridget Barho definitely doing a great job holding down that front line there. And Bloody Mary is through as lead jammer for the Texecutioners. Vicious Van Gogo has been go go into the penalty box all night long. She's had some really good plays, but she's been missing a lot, hitting a lot of penalties. Hope she can clean it up because they could really be hurting the Texecutioners right now. Pack into turn three as Bloody Mary enters the pack for the Texecutioners. Barbara Ambush has made her initial pass now. Bloody Mary gets through, calls it off in turn two. I see five to the sky there. Yeah, five points. Five point Grand Slam. And now what we're looking at is we're looking at what we call a ladder climb. That's when you do it one ring at a time to get to the top. Texecutioners have so far been controlling the second half by just one point margins every jam. They finally got that five point margin up on the box. Oh, what are we seeing here? It's back to 39, Moose. It's now 48 to 39. Looks like the referees took back only, one of those points. It was only, yeah, it was only four points, so. Ambo yelling out split pack, making the Gotham girls come back to the pack again. Got Shooting John on the outside. Olivia Shooting John. Oh! And a trip. Olivia Shooting John is through his lead jammer for the Texecutioners. That is a tough call against Sweet Sherry Pie as she jumped over Olivia Shooting John when she fell, but the back of her leg just tapped the top of her head. Olivia Shooting John gets lead jammer status, and Sweet Sherry Pie gets off to the penalty box. And Bonnie Thunders has now made her initial pass. As Olivia Shooting John's back into the pack in the straightaway, down to turn one, now the scoring pass, calls a jam off. Four and out again. Nearing Four our, and out. And narrowing our score now, 48 for Gotham, 43 for the Texecutioners. If this game wasn't fast enough to start with, now they're going four and out. You know, Jim Kool-Aid Jones definitely had something to do in the locker room about how they were going to come out for this second half. And they're talking four and out, four and out, four and out. And they're climbing the ladder of success right now with only five points separating the two teams. And Susie Hot Rod up against Lucille Brawl in the jam positions as the pack goes into turn three. Lucille Brawl falls her through, and Lucille Brawl, lead jammer for the Texecutioners once again. Great pull off of Friction Vixen to help Lucille Ball through the front of that pack. They use that girl like a wall whenever they can. And jammer takeout by Rice Rocket on Susie Hot Rod. Nice, and you don't like to see anything more than you like to see a referee go down by Susie Hot Rod. Susie Hara yet to make her initial pass. Lucille Brawl back in the pack now on a scoring pass. She has lapped Susie Hara. We'll see if we can get a grand slam here. Once again, Frischen Vixen gets her through the front of that pack. And Susie Hara gets through on her initial pass. 
And yes, I see five in the sky there. That's a grand slam for Lucille Brawl. That is five in the sky for Lucille Brawl. And we now have a tie score. We got a tie score right now, folks. 48 up. It's like we're starting from scratch, Moose. I got caught a little bit carried away there, but now with 20 minutes left in the bout, we have a tie score, 48 to 48, as there's a timeout on the track. And time to remind you about our wonderful sponsors that are bringing you this bout tonight. Once again, Black Eyed Susan. Once again, Roller Warriors, the DVD that you need to get. Log on to www.derbynewsnetwork. What am I saying? If you're listening to me, you're on there. When you're done watching the live boatcast, go back to the homepage, find the link to Roller Warriors, click on it and buy it. Support Roller Derby and educate yourself and your league about what it takes to become the best team in the nation. As we got fisticuffs, up off the line for Gotham. And Olivia shooting John for the Texas Tuchners. Olivia shooting John trips up over her own skates at the back of the pack. And Fisticuffs being held tight. 53. This is Van Gogo. Hit her on the outside, and it was considered a clean hit. Very, very, very difficult call to be made by the referee. And that yeah, was really close. Looks like, yes, 50 Cubs call for cutting a track. This will be a power jam for the Texecutioners. Exactly what the Texecutioners want is the momentum. They have lead jammer status now with Olivia shooting John, and they are going into a power jam. As she goes into turn number two, Kool-Aid is telling them, Move, move, move. And fire to the sky for Olivia shooting John. Jim Kool-Aid Jones is trying to get his executioners to slow down over there. He's yelling at him, slow down, and he's yelling at Olivia shooting John, speed up. And here she comes once again, packing the turn three. A big hit on her, knocked to the inbounds, but she goes down. Not called for cutting the track there. Olivia shooting John back into the pack now, back into turn two. As Olivia Shoot John still looking for a line through the pack. Hyperlinks definitely gave her a good hit on that first inside. Sweet Sherry Pie definitely doing what she can to hold her back, pushing her in, but she makes the turn, and that is the end of the jam. Olivia Shoot John calling it off there, trying to preserve a little bit more of the power jam there. Start off this, this next jam with the power jam for the Texecutioners. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was a nine point jam. As we are looking at a score of 57 for the Texecutioners to the Gotham Girls, 48. Holy cow. I don't know what the poll voting was today on DNN. I know a lot of people were automatically writing Texas out of this boat. Well, you better rewrite that story. As Bloody Mary's coming up to the line, going to be skating unopposed. We have a little referee timeout. Fifty-seven, forty-eight. the official score there, 18-13 left in the bout. And we also want to thank Roller Warriors DVD, now on sale at RollerWarriors.tv. Roller Warriors, Roller Warriors, Roller Warriors. If I don't, you're going to go to sleep tonight dreaming about Roller Warriors. I am not going to stop talking about it until I see a thousand hits have bought that DVD tonight, Roller Warriors. It is about a team making their way to championship status in one year's time. It is about everything roller derby. It is a reality show without all the drama. Yeah, we got, we got roller girls from all over the country here. We have Kid Ace, 
we have for Shizzy Borden, all Providence Roller Derby out there. We got Suburbia, of course. I'm looking at, I got Suburbia Roller Girls, I got Connecticut Roller Girls, we got Pioneer Valley. We got Philly in the house. We got Boston Derby Dames in the house. We got everybody who is anybody in New England that loves roller derby is here tonight. Eighteen minutes, thirteen seconds, a score of fifty-seven to thirty-eight. Not sure what's being discussed at center track right now. There's a big uh, zebra meeting out there right now. And remember, if you support Derby News Network, you pledge money to Derby News Network, who knows, maybe one of these days we can get a ref mic, a ref cam, and we'll know what the hell they're talking about out there. We'll get a remote mic on them, yeah. I'm sure we want to hear all those uh, all those platitudes that are expressed to the referees out there. We'll definitely have to put a little bit more delay on it when that happens, because I'm sure that there's some very colorful language and terminology being used right now. Moose will need an assistant for the, the uh, what's it called, the bleep button, yes. The bleep button, the, the shootout button, I believe they call it. Misconception going around with some cupcakes. Misconception, misconception, hold up those cupcakes. Those are just beautiful. Those are, I can't eat cupcakes. I wish I could. Back to flag track action now as both jammers on the track. Mr. Cuss for Gotham. Bloody Mary is through as lead jammer for the Texecutioners. Like I said earlier, it's all about momentum and it looks like it's in the hands of the Texecutioners right now. Bloody Mary out there skating hard and heavy, already at the back of the pack. Fisticuffs is still, nope, now she has finally broken the pack. But Bloody Mary is on her scoring pass. Fisticuffs a fast skater though. She'll be back to the back of that pack real quick. Bloody Mary scoring it, 4-0. Four and out, and bringing the score to 61 to 48 in favor of the Texecutioners. I don't care what anybody says, what you said was gonna happen at the beginning of the night, nobody thought this was gonna happen. No, it's not that we didn't think Texas would win or lose this boat, but nobody thought it was going to be this knockdown, drag out roller derby action. I didn't know that was going to be this evening, and I really didn't. Susie Hot Rod coming up on the line for the Gotham Girls against Lucille Brawl for the Texecutioners. Texecutioners running the momentum, playing this game like they're down by 20 points. Both jammers in the pack now into turn one. Coming into turn two, Lucille Brawl looking for a line. She's up against Gotham Girls. And Lucille Brawl is through and lead jammer for the Texecutioners. Sweet cherry pie hit her. Fisted Cubs hit her. She was like living inside of a pinball machine, but she came out clear and tight. Susie Hot Rod clears the pack. Initial pass back into turn two. Now the back stretch, and Lucille Brawl almost virtually unchallenged is through. Calls off the jam in turn three. Once again, four and out. There is definitely a strategy going on here. The executioners have built it up and have everything going in their direction right now. Bonnie Thunder's coming up on the line for the Gotham Girls against. Olivia shooting John for the Texecutioners. I'd like to say that Texas is stretching their lead, but there is no comfortable lead in a bout like this. 15 minutes to go, anything can happen as both these skaters are deep inside their pack. And look at here, Gotham, Bonnie Thunders gets through and she's lead jammer for Gotham. Olivia shooting John still inside the pack. Has to be let go is the 20 foot rule in play. So Olivia shooting John is out. Back in the turn four as Bonnie Thunders approaches the pack. Wall, the Texas is there, but now the wall trends and Bonnie Thunders on the outside and scoring points before Olivia shooting John can get there. 
Call that jam off really quick as she knows she's got inside that. Fisticuffs coming up onto the line for the Gotham Girls against Lucille Brawl. Moose, what do you think about this? It's going back and forth now. Gotham Girls starting to climb a little bit back, but the Texecutioners definitely have a 14-point lead. Remember going into this half, they were down by 50, no, 60. Now they're up by 14. It's still, still anybody's bout as we have Lucille Brawl going down in, in turn two as 50 cuffs for Gotham. 50 cuffs is so, so physical inside that pack. And a big, big jammer takeout. Beautiful hit by Vix's Van Gogo. Taking down Fisticuffs. And Lucille Brawl is through and lead jammer for the Texas Cutioners. Fisticuffs right behind her, though. Right behind her, but getting chased by the rest of the pack. As the pack is skating so fast that you have to be 50 feet in front of the pack to get a 20 foot call. And Lucille Brawl calls the jam off in turn one. And looking for points, fingers going up. Is that three, three fingers in the air? I think I see there, yes. Three fingers and a big egg for the Gotham girls right now. As we go to a score of 68 to 51, 17 point lead. We got Bonnie Thunders coming up on the line with the Gotham girls. Heading up against Bloody Mary for the Texecutioners. Coming into the third turn, we both, both skaters deep inside. Nobody's coming close to the front of that pack right now. Back in the back stretch now, coming into turn three. No lead jam established yet, but here comes Bonnie Thunders on the outside. She is through and she is lead jammer for Gotham. Turning on the hot rod as she can. Bonnie Thunders gets lead jammer status. An amazing sprint out of that outside pack line. Bloody Mary is still trying to make her initial pass and does so as made her initial pass. Finally through, but definitely leaving a lot of room for Bonnie Thunders to take advantage of the pack. Let's see if she can get through and score out, call off this jam. Oh no, Bloody Mary's right back in there. Bonnie Thunders had to call off that jam. Bloody Mary was catching up awfully quick there and Bonnie Thunder wisely calls off the jam. You gotta figure that the Gotham girls are getting a little frustrated as every time a jam seems to go to their lead, they still don't get the points on the board that they need to get to close this 15 point lead. Actually scoring update there, 68 to 53 in favor of Texas Kishner's with 1120 left in the bout. Fisty Cups up on the line, going up against Olivia, shooting John for the Texas Kishner. Sweet Sherry Pie holding that front line for Gotham. Packing the turn two now. No jammer has been through on their initial pass as yet. Olivia shooting John looking for a line. Fisticus is at the back of the pack and is in traffic and cannot get through. Bell Star trying to act like a human juggernaut and carry her through the pack, but got hit on the outside. This is because ahead of Olivia, uh, Olivia shooting John now as the pack goes into turn one, now turn two. And looks like, yes. This is because it's true, loses the handle though in turn three, hits a wet spot on the track and loses it, calls the jam off when she goes down. She's looking for something on the track. She's saying, I didn't fall, something tripped me, but I don't think she found anything. Jim Goulet Jones says, my girls don't say anything, but something's on the track. He's looking himself. They're, they're checking out the track there and make sure there's no damage on the track or no wet spot. They're the looking. Ref, the referees are going out there and making sure because you know, she, she lost the, she was lead jam, nobody near her, and she just totally lost the handle. Totally lost out, but you know, 
Sometimes it's just in your head, man. You take one misstep. We all got to remember one fact. They play this game on eight wheels. You fall down all the time, man. You know, but our referees are doing what's right. They check the floor to make sure everything's safe. They make sure everybody's all right. They take a small timeout, make sure that the girls have what the girls need. And now we're looking at 10 minutes and 16 seconds left. We're looking at the Texas Usuers at 68, the Gotham Girls All-Stars at 53. You couldn't write the story of this boat any better than this. This is just incredible bout. I am so glad I made the journey up here. You know, this is one of those bouts like, why am I doing this? And now, oh yeah, now I remember why. Because I love roller derby. Roller derby is awesome. You know, when you put all the travel aside, you put all the money aside, you put all everything we do to get here aside, and then you remember when you see boats like this, why you do it. It's a love for this sport and a love for the girls that play it. Girls out there like Bonnie Thunders and Lucille Brawl. Both coming off the jam line around turn number two. Into turn number three. Now Lucille Brawl and Bonnie Thunders both deep inside the pack. Lucille Brawl looking around her, looking for some assistance. Nobody to be found. It's a one-on-one -on -one with her. Lucille Brawl looking for a line there, not getting it yet. Bonnie Thunder's at the back of the pack. Pack slows up now. Lucille Brawl gets knocked out of bounds and has to escape to the back of the pack, wait for the pack to catch up to her, so go back in bounds again, so she doesn't get a, a, a track cut and all. Brigitte Barho. Second neck now, as both jammers go down in turn four, and Lucille Brawl going to the penalty box. One of the Texas Chasers, this will be a power jam for Gotham. This is exactly what Gotham's looking for. A power jam on their side, and Bonnie Thunders is definitely gonna do what she can to take advantage of it. But Rice Rocket, oh, huge pushover. Rice Rocket cuts her over. She goes to cut down and right over one of her own players. She's gonna start that momentum all over as Fisticuffs lay down in front of her and over she went. Bonnie Thunder's now through, and she is your lead jammer. Let's see if Texas speeds up the pack here. Some action going on with the uh, Zebra Committee as they're going back and forth over there. Only two Texas Cushers on the track now, uh, third now joining from the penalty box. This is exactly what Gotham wants. And that's far from the sky right now. Bonnie Thunder's. Brings it down to a 10 point game, 68 to 58, with plenty of time on the clock. However, Lucille Brawl is back out of the box and into the pack. Bonnie Thunders wisely calls off that jam, got the five points up, and now we're looking at a 10 point lead. No, I'm seeing some more. We're looking at a nine point lead as the Gotham girls are now at 59 points, the Texecutioners 68. Nine points, seven minutes and 50 seconds left on the clock. You couldn't ask for this to be any better. Looks like we get a timeout now. 68-59, uh, 7.50 left in the bout as we take a time out to thank our wonderful sponsors who are bringing this awesome bout to you tonight. Once again, Black Eyed Susan Skate Shop, Black Eyed Susan Skate Shop, Black Eyed Susan Skate Shop. And of course, Roller Warriors, the DVD. Go to rollerwarriors.tv.com, or .tv, not .com, .tv, and get your full season of Roller Warriors DVD at rollerwarriors.tv. If you can't find the link, go to derbynewsnetwork.com, Find the link there and get yours today. Yeah, stop watching reality shows like, you know, X of Love and I Want to Be in Love with a Rock Star and how many ignorant people can I put in a house until they get it's, drunk and yell at each other. Piss off at each other. Piss off each other. You want to see great reality DVD. And we had a whistle start and the whistle stopped. Not sure what happened there. A false start of the full pack there. We're requeuing now. She, I think she was just blowing the, all right, let's get this going again. And we've re queued now. The pack is back where it's supposed to be. Both jammers on the line. As we have Bloody Mary for the executioners. Susie Hot Rod for Gotham. 
Both Bloody Mary and Susie Hot Rod Fast Skaters by turn two. They are deep inside the park. And Bloody Mary trying to fight through the front of the pack. But lucky there. Susie Hot Rod gets lead jammer status. Oh, and Bloody Mary is heading off to the penalty box. Gotham is up for another power jam. Power jam for Susie Hot Rod here. It seems to get some, even up the score here. As we wind down, 7.18 left in the back. As another Texas Kutcher goes to the penalty box. This is a story that just keeps rewriting itself. Everything you want to see and more, as you now have. Oh, we are now looking at number 76. Corvette heading off to the penalty box for the Texas Kutcher. Hold we on. got four on two. Four on two. As Hot Rod's back into the back for another scoring pass. Unchallenged, he's through with ease. Another five in the sky, and the Gotham girls have just taken the lead, 69 to 68, with six minutes and 37 seconds left to this bout. And she's going for one more pass here. He said if the Texas Hoosiers could score a 15 point jam, so can we, and she's off to prove it. Incredible derby happening right here in Connecticut. As Susie Hara on another scoring pass, five to the sky, another grand slam as the score goes to 74 to 68 in favor of the Gotham girls. Bloody Mary back out onto the pack, chasing down Susie Harrod. She lets her think she's gonna get there for a minute, and then she calls off that champ. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now looking at 74 to 68 in favor of the Gotham girls all-stars. And I gotta say it, oh my God, Moose. Incredible, incredible derby going on here. Six point bout, six points. Anybody's bout as Bonnie Thunder comes to the, to the jam line for Gotham. Olivia shooting John up there for the Texacution. These two girls very familiar with themselves now. This crowd is going crazy as both of these jammers enter turn two. Both jammers in the pack. Libby shooting John gets knocked inbounds, out of bounds. She's back on the track now. It's called for cutting the track. I don't think it's a major though. She will not be able to get lead jam if she gets through. Bunny Thunders is your lead jammer. She breaks through the outside of that pack. Almost unknown to the Texas team as they were a little more curious about the cutting of the drag penalty. And Olivia shooting John looking for some help from some of her blockers. She's at the back of the pack. Has not made her initial pass. Here comes Bonnie Thunders on a scoring pass. Bonnie Thunders has passed Olivia shooting John, and she is now in the back scoring again. Oh, great hit right there. Number 76, Corvette knocked to the floor, but obviously did it a little illegally, hit it to the front, so she's heading off to the penalty box. Olivia shooting John still has not made her initial pass. She is stuck behind the Gotham wall that we know as fisticuffs. Bonnie Thunders, another five in the sky. Standing lead now, 79 to 68 in favor of Gotham. And they are telling Bonnie Thunders to keep going. She now goes into turn two again, trying to make a third pass. Olivia shooting John is just stuck at the back of the pack. She has not made her initial pass at all. Fisticuffs has been a one-woman wrecking machine. Finally, finally, Olivia shooting John gets through the pack. Fisticuffs just was done hitting her, I guess, after a while. And a 20-foot call, and Bonnie. Bonnie Thunder calls off the jam. Standing the lead. 84 to 68. A 10 point jam for Bonnie Thunders. Now they're pulling up. They're, they're not holding out anything as they go for a rice rocket. Heading up to the line for the Texacutioners against Susie Hot Rod. The crowd is chanting, Let's go, Gotham. I think I, there's just as many Texacutioners as fans in this audience tonight. They have a hometown advantage here as we have two full teams on the track now. And Susie Hot Rod up against Rice Rocket for the Texacutioners back in the turn one, now turn two. 
Rice Rocket looking for an inside line, doesn't get it, goes to the outside. Rice Rocket is true and is lead jammer for the Executioners. And a ball is getting pulled off. Back block. Rice Rocket is your lead jammer, and this is exactly what the Executioners need. The only trouble is she's being tracked down by a mean, nasty Susie Hot Rod. Pack is spread out through turn two as Rice Rock gets knocked inbounds, the back inbounds again, calls the jam off. Very smart as Susie Hot Rod was about to enter that pack. We're looking at two minutes and 29 seconds. We're looking at two points for the Texecutioners. We're looking at a 14 point game, 84 to 70, in favor of the Gotham Girls All Stars. Bonnie Thunder is coming up onto the line once again against Bloody Mary for the Texecutioners. Bunny Thunders, Bloody Mary off the line. Turn two, they are already inside the pack. Bunny the outside, Bloody Mary to the inside. Nice Bonnie hit by Bunny gets knocked out of bounds. She's still at the back of the pack on the initial pass. Bloody Mary is almost here, gets knocked in bounds, out of bounds. And Bloody Mary is called lead jammer as she's through the pack on her initial pass. Bonnie Thunders still held up in the pack on her initial pass. Not just in the pack, but at the back of the pack moves. She's looking at Friction Vixen, who just keeps laying it down on her. She's also getting hit by the great executioners. Kata kills him. Is back there hitting her with everything she has. And five to the sky for Bloody Mary. Five more points. Bring it to 84 to 75 with 111 left in the bout. This is Van Gogh -Go going off to the penalty box. One minute and five seconds left. The jam clock is ahead of the game clock, so we may have another jam here. Bonnie Thunders has made her initial pass now. Bloody Mary into the pack once again, calls off the jam in turn two. We'll have time for one more jam. She's calling for the timeout. She's calling for the timeout. I haven't seen the clock change yet. The clock is running finally. That timeout takes back. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the story. The Gotham Girls, the Texecutioners. We are looking at eight points separating these two teams. We are looking at one more jam. It's going to come down to this one last jam. 35 seconds. There's definitely not going to be a chance for two jams. So you are looking at right now a situation for the Tex Executioners where they are saying, we not only have to get Lee Jammer, we have to shut down their Jammer and we need to score. And the Tex Executioners go with Lucille Brawl in the jam position. 35 seconds left, she's gonna have to get two full passes to, to even it up. She's gotta go seven to zero to win this game right now. As you can hear the crowd behind me, let's go Gotham. Gotham still with a home track advantage here. We still have a timeout on the track. I wonder what it's like at that bar in Texas where they're throwing the party right now. I think the chainsaw is rev revving and Texas, Texas, kill, kill, kill is being chanted, chanted at over the top and over of the lung. Like I said, that mechanical bull is going to get his ass kicked tonight. We're waiting to see who's going to come up onto the line here. The sale brawl coming back off is another. They're taking their time on this. They're yeah. making sure they get their strategy down. Every Perfect for this. Everything that that this trip is about is about this next jam. And it looks like they're gonna go, Gotham's gonna go with Bonnie Thunders in the jammer position. We seal brawl for Tex executioners. Jim Kool-Aid giving her some last minute pointers here. He's looking happy. He's out there, he's telling her, all you have to do is score seven points. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll if you're at home, if you're watching this, you should be out of your seats and on your feet making noise for your favorite team right here. Eight points, world-class derby here with 35 seconds left. Barney Thunders, Lucille Bro, 33 seconds left to go. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. A slow pack starting off in the turn one, now turn two. Boat Chambers quick off the line. Bonnie Thunders gets the edge. But she goes out of bounds in turn three. 
Lucille Brawl gets hit in turn four. Neither jammer has established lead jam yet. No initial pass as of yet. Susie Hotright, great hit on Lucille Brawl holding her back there. Both jammers are back to the back of the pack. Bonnie Thunders now. Lucille Brawl goes down on turn four. Bonnie Thunders makes the back and she is your lead jammer. She can call oh. the jam at any point in time now. And that will be the bout as she calls the jam. Ladies and gentlemen, the Gotham girls have beat the Tex Executioners in a bout that will not soon be forgotten with a score of 84 to 76. What incredible, an, incredible action here tonight, Al. Eight points separating these two teams. What an amazing, amazing bout. Amazing bout as, as the fans line up along the track to give all the players a high five in true derby fashion. This is what we come to see. This is what we travel the country to watch. This is roller derby at its best. And as you can see, folks, you're watching it. Everybody's gathered around with their hands out. Both of these teams. Both of these teams need a huge, huge hands up. Let's go see if we can get some interviews, Moose. And as Reverend Al goes out to wrangle some uh, skaters for post bout interviews, we want to thank Black Eyed Susan Skate Shop for supporting Derby News Network coming to shoot live here in Connecticut. We also want to thank Roller Warriors, the DVD. Go to rollerwarriors.tv and get yours today. Texas is now making their consolation lap around and getting congratulations from all the fans here in Connecticut. Incredible, incredible bout here tonight against Gotham. 84-76 the final. Stick around. We'll have some post-bout interviews for you with some of the skaters. As the Ramones are playing in the background in honor of the Gotham Girls Roller Derby. Chaos, chaos, chaos. It's hard to get a skater's attention right now as both teams going crazy. But I got Bonnie Thunder coming over here in just a second to give us a little interview time. We're just waiting for her to show up here. This is going absolutely insane. Reverend Almighty now gonna be speaking. And Zena Paradox lets us know how she feels. Corn Dog, do it up, man. Give her a Corn Dog stepping away. How do you like this, man? What a great bout this was. Nobody was expecting this kind of bout tonight. Hey, you know Exactly. You guys have been dominating teams all year. And that's not putting you guys down. You guys are that damn good. And that's the bottom line. Texas, on the other side of the country, has been doing the same thing. Finally, the two of you meet, and it ends like this. It was such an exciting game and a like, heart wrencher. I mean, I just am so proud of Texas for coming, stepping it up so much. They're just doing awesome. I'm so proud of them. Awesome team. i got to ask you the quick question. Will there be a dance-off tonight at the after party? Well, I'm going to guess not because Texas has a game at 11 a.m. tomorrow. We'll have to challenge Connecticut to a dance-off. New York always wins. New York always wins the dance-off, and tonight they won the bout. Thank you again, Bonnie. Great, great bout tonight. Thanks for being here, DNN. Bonnie Thunder, 
congratulations. Great, great, great pal. I'm Moose Olives. I've been working with you before. It's been an honor to be here tonight. And we'll see you down the road, I'm sure. Good job. See you regional. Joining us now is Desecration from the Texecutioners. Desecration, your thoughts on this incredible bout. Gosh, I have one word and that's wow. I think this is exactly what everyone wanted to see. I know it's exactly what we wanted to do. We wanted to come in, play the number one team in the nation, and show them that we're still Texas. We can still do this. It was a close bout back and forth and through the entire bout. People on the edge of their seats at home, I'm sure. That's what we pay money for, is for a game like this. Oh, incredible. Now, looking forward to tomorrow. Any predictions for tomorrow? Um, gosh, rest in a lot of Wheaties. We've got quite the weekend ahead of us. We're going to actually miss the after party, which is just devastating to us because Texas always makes a push to win the after party. But tonight, we're going to get right into our vans and drive to Boston because we have to be there for an 11 a.m. game tomorrow, which I hear that y'all will be there for as well. We're going to, yeah, we're going to do our best to be there. We'll have the text cast. We're not sure about video yet, but tune in to DerbyNewsNetwork.com. We'll, we'll try to have something for you. And that'll be game number one of the day, number two of the weekend. And then uh, just a few short hours later, that the first game is against Charm City, the second game is against Boston. And what can you say? It's one hell of a weekend when you try to play three top ten teams, including the number one in the nation, in about 27 hours. That's incredible, incredible. Now, do you want to say anything to the fans down in Austin who are watching right now? It takes a village to raise a team. Thank you all so much, especially to our Texas League, to our fans back home, to everyone that got us here. We didn't do this without riding on a lot of backs and a lot of shoulders, so thank you all so much. Well, well said. Good luck tomorrow. Great bout tonight, and we'll definitely see you down the road. Thank you all very much. See you tomorrow. Desi Creation, everybody. Well, Reverend Al, this has been an incredible bout. I, I, I just, you know, words evade me right now. They just do. Right now, I mean, nobody expected this boat to happen like this. I heard people say, Texas is going to come in and roll over Gotham. I heard people say, what are you, crazy? Gotham is the, at least the, is the immovable object. They are the champions for a reason. Nobody's going to even, be, even come close to beating them. They've been beating everybody by 100 points this year. We just saw what I hope isn't, but what definitely could be the bout of the season. This is the bout of the season, and... We might see this again in the, the national championship. Maybe, maybe. Could we see the third? You know, now we're now we're looking at each other. The first one was a hard hit and blow up. The second one missed it by that much. much. You know, Texas, they're walking away with a smile on their face saying, we gave it everything we got and we only lost by by you know eight points. But you know in the back of their head they're saying we lost and we need to beat this team. Let's we'll see if we can get Kool-Aid and uh, Corn Dog over here to get a, a final thoughts from them before we sign off tonight here in Connecticut. Let's get him in. Corn Dog! Ladies and gentlemen, as Corn Dog just ignores us, here comes Jim Kool-Aid Jones. And let's get his final thoughts here. Join us in the center here. I need to know when you went out there at the end, you had some final. Um, you were dancing a little bit. You were moving around a little bit. What was your final word of inspiration down by eight points going into the final jam? Uh, <laughs> honestly, I told the girls just to go out there and have some fun. I mean, that's this is a beautiful game, incredible. We came this close to uh, taking Gotham. It's been over a year now since they've been beat. I told them, hey, you might get it, you might not. Either way, I told them coming in, and I repeated it just now. It's like, either way, we win. We win the game, then we win. We lose the game. Guess what? We got something to talk about in practice for the next six months. Keep these girls motivated, keep them hungry, and uh, we'll see you in Philadelphia. I definitely, we were just talking about that. Yeah. Philadelphia, could we see these two teams come to get for the third time? I mean, we're looking at it. I, I'll say it right now. You know, Texas barely lost. It was a great bout, but they did lose, and I, I hope they come back hungry. I hope to see Nationals, and I hope to see Texas versus Gotham at Nationals. Absolutely. Uh, Morphine, we'll see you there. She's uh, laying it up at home right now, but we'll be back. We'll be strong. We'll be back. Kool-Aid says they'll be strong, and they will be back. Thank you, Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid, good job, Mike. Good hey. job. Thank you to Gotham very much for coming out and playing. You guys rock. And, and guys, say home, home team, home uh, watch party. <laughs> what do you have to say for that?
Uh, do a shot for me. We're driving to Baltimore. We have a game at uh, 11 o'clock in the morning tomorrow against, I believe, the seventh ranked team in the nation. And then, uh, oh, oh, and the third. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, get some good sleep tonight. Get your girls get some good sleep tonight. We're going to Boston. Ladies and gentlemen, this was an attractive man only eight hours ago. <laughs> and now he's a little worn out. Our last interview tonight, Hambone Referee. Referees. Oh. Referees, oh, no. People are going, oh, no. What do we do here? What do we do? Hambone. From the referee's perspective, your thoughts on the bat tonight? Uh, both teams understood the rules really well. I mean, the, uh, I'm only really going to elaborate at length about the refing, but people throw the phrase best bout ever around a lot in roller derby. And in my mind, it was two teams who were very skilled, who both did everything right. And it was not who's going to make the biggest mistake at the end. It was just whose strength was going to hit whose strength at the end. It was just a, a real pleasure to have an in-field view on it. Sorry, I'm still a little worn out. But, um, and the girls really understood the rules. They weren't caught by surprise by anything. They knew what each other were doing. It was just who was gonna who was gonna have more strength in it. Uh, it was a great bout, back and forth. I think it was well called from a, an outside perspective. I think it was a well called bout. Uh, there might have been a jam or two there where we were confused about the points, but I think we got that streak down pretty quick. Yeah, I'm not the points guy tonight, thankfully. <laughs> I'm the 20 foot guy in the front, and I thought. I thought the skaters did a real good job of helping us out. I'm a bridge, I'm a bridge. Yes, you are. No, you're not. Um, I mean, you get those fun kind of dialogues and eyeballs at girls all night long, and Texas girls are a lot of fun that way, and our girls, I work with them every day, and they're a lot of fun that way, too. Uh, that was, uh, the, I want to do it again. That was so much. That was. Are you repping the games tomorrow? No, I'm not. We've got uh, the Coney Island Mermaid Parade in Coney Island, which is a big marketing event for our league, so we wish we could be there, but um, we've got a big parade to be in on roller skates on the boardwalk of Coney Island. Well, that really great. So the sugar daddy is going up, though, right? Ah, uh, yes, yes. Okay, well, great. It looks like uh, Bull Tooth Tracy and Candy Case got the best or most valuable players. I see awards being handed out there in the middle of the track right now. And, and, and thank you so much for a great game tonight. I, I, I got to learn to start bringing big plates and cream or pies. And just, and just hit the announcer in the face. Well, hit the announcers, nail Moose in the face. Whatever you want to do, what a night. It's Ben Moose. Incredible. It's been Thank great working with you. Great to call about. I, this first challenge for me tonight is call about with you and run the video production as well. And it looks like we had well over a thousand people watching. I'm sure there's more than that in, in watch parties across the nation watching and the world and I'm watching about here tonight. I'm sure if we screwed up, we'll hear about it tomorrow. We'll, we'll hear all the, you should have done this, you should have done that, but that's okay. Once again, we want to thank, we want to thank our wonderful, wonderful sponsor tonight. Black Eyed Susan Skate Shop, once again, please support those who support Roller Derby. Go online and buy something right now. And Roller Warriors, the DVD, go to rollerwarriors.tv and get yours today. The entire season of KC Roller Warriors 2007 Championship season, it's on DVD. It's incredible. Go buy one now. Or if you just want to donate directly to the www.derbynewsnetwork.com, if you like what you see, let's keep this going. You'll never have to leave your couch, and you can watch Derby all day long. And, and bounce moose all over the nation, and we'll, we'll sponsor you. If you're doing your own live stream at home for your home bout, let the moose know at moose at derbynewsnetwork.com. We'll get it listed on Derby News Network. We want to be your TV guide for Derby, Derby action all across the world. So our final score here once again tonight, Gotham 84, Texecutioner 76, and just an incredible back and forth bout all night long. Hopefully tomorrow we'll have the video, maybe, maybe not. If not, we'll definitely have the text cast for the Charm, Charm City girls and for the Boston bout. We might have video, can't guarantee it because we don't know about the bandwidth. But if you tune in tomorrow, derbynewsnetwork.com slash live, we'll see what we have for you. I'm the Reverend Almighty alongside Moose on the Loose. And Rev, thank you. And as always, this is Moose on the Loose on behalf of the Derby News Network. Reminding you, when your wheels are up and your helmet's down, get her back next time around. We'll see you real soon. Thank you.